All right, so Sam Max is about to put out their very first plugin called Diablo. And as a pre-release, they're giving out a free version called Diablo Lite. Now, at the time of recording this video, Diablo Lite is not even out yet. It comes out tomorrow on the 31st, which is going to be New Year's Eve, actually. Now, the full version of Diablo and Diablo Lite are going to be focused around drum mixing. Now, what exactly they're going to be doing in this plugin, we don't even know yet because it's not even released. But if you guys do just want to skip to the part of the video where Diablo Lite is already out and we start using it, I should have a timestamp already in YouTube right there. But I want to get this video out to you guys as soon as possible. So today, I figure we can make a beat like normal, and then I won't do anything for the mixing, and then as soon as Diablo Light comes out, I'll put everything in there and we'll start doing all of our effects. So let's get into that right now. Just because I want to start doing the drums very quickly, I wanted to just go over here and grab a melody loop, also from Cymatics, of course. Ooh, I like this one a lot. Yeah, okay, definitely. All right, so we're not gonna be doing any mixing for the drums yet, but what I do wanna do is go over here into the melody loop and just cut some of the low end, because I feel like that will be clashing with any sort of like 808s or bass that I use. That should be good like that, okay. It is in D minor, and I usually like to work within like a little bit different frequency tone, so maybe we'll try and go to like, like F maybe? Okay, cool. Okay, so first of all, I'm just gonna be going over to my next pack, which uh, is gonna be called the Simtastic pack. I'm not exactly sure why I named it that, but it's cool, I guess. Anyway, these are full of drums that I have not exactly quite finished yet. Um, certain things I want to a little bit harder, certain things where I'm not quite sure if I want this one or that one. Once the full pack is all out, it's gonna be completely, you know, quality, but for right now, uh, they still need to be a little bit more tuned, so I think these are going to be perfect for testing out this plugin. I think for the 808s though, I do want to use the, um, where is it, the Goliath 808s. I like that one. Alright, now I think we've got everything that we need in order to start making this jump pattern. And then usually what I've been doing for my hi-hat rolls is actually going down to one half step and then just doing something like this. And right there. Actually go down to one third beat and then alt U, nope, wrong one, control U, perfect. Only thing here though is that I actually want, uh, let's, go, let's go and see here. I don't want, I want this one to be here, so I'm gonna get rid of that one. And then for the rolls, just, just get rid of them. Get rid of those for now, only in the last eight bars. Add a little bit of separation between these next four bars. Ooh, that was good, I like that actually. And I think right here too. That way it fits with the hi-hat a little bit more. I think that's all we're really gonna need. I want the ending to be just the hi-hats going on over here. That's good. Copy and pasting that down to my 808 pattern. No, okay, right there. No, even lower than that. I was wrong. Which is right there. Maybe just D sharp. Perfect. Nailed it. First try. Ooh, ooh, yeah, that's good. Like that. I think those though, I want to be slides. So what I have to do is go over here and then make them, um, I don't have to do this, but I prefer doing this method whenever I make really intense slides. That's all right, that's fine. Oh, maybe you can just cut off after the snare. I like it both ways. I'll just leave it long, it's fine. You know what I'm actually thinking though? We're gonna keep the 808, but I might want to grab a synth bass. I haven't used one in a while. I'm all about like separation in between verses and uh, and hooks. And I think that dropping out a synth for the hook and bringing the 808 just brings that like that much more, more energy and vice versa. And my favorite uh, sub bass inside of Omnisphere is going to be Oscar bass. Something's off here, man. It's got like an LFO to it that I'm not liking. And I don't think it was there before. I can't really hear all that well if the synth bass is a little bit too loud as opposed to everything else, but I think it sounds okay with my headphones on. All right, so I think that's gonna be all that we're gonna be doing today. We've got our drum loop and everything going on. So tomorrow, once the actual Diablo light comes out, we're gonna be doing all of our drum mixing and then doing all of our arrangement too. All right, so here's the final loop that I just made for you guys right now, and I will see you guys tomorrow.
right, it's time. It is finally time. I've been sitting here at my computer now for around two hours waiting for this to actually be available to download, but it is finally here. Diablo Light is finally out. And I am just so stoked for this. Let's go back over to Apple Studio and see what we can do to the gems that we've already made. Am I talking fast? It feels like I'm talking fast. So we are gonna be doing a few different things here. I wanna see what the plugin will do to the gems individually, like the kick and the snare. And then I'm gonna put everything onto a master bus and then put that on there and see if it does anything for that. And then finally, I already have another drum shaper and that's going to be the DS-10 from XLN, the same guys that make RC20. So I'm gonna see how that compares with that too. Well, keeping in mind this is a light version of Diablo and not everything with the full effects on it, but we're still gonna try it out. All right, so first thing is first, uh, this kick. All right, so this kick is hitting reasonably hard, so let's go over here and see if we can't do anything else with the Diablo light. And you can turn it on and off. Ooh, one reason why I think that every single plugin needs to have an input and an output is sometimes when you're like when I'm doing uh, sound design right when I'm making kicks and snares if you're not paying attention to what the input is you could actually be really compressing it by putting all this distortion on there and adding the punch and everything like that so I think if you want to not have that compression sort of feeling you got to lower that down and then the more that you add it won't be compressed like it usually will be if you don't put down the input okay now the weird part is I um it's kind of hard to hear exactly what it's doing if um I'm using headphones so I might be switching over to my speakers here in a minute yeah let's go and do that now so unfortunately this means that I cannot be speaking while I'm doing these drums so because then I'll be picking up the actual audio too and that's already helping it out a lot and I really like the soft clip on here the hard clip is nice but you might just need to go a little bit down in the knob over here, like 28 sounds pretty good. And as you can see right here, we're not going, even going close to zero, so it's not gonna be compressing it at all, except for the actual clip that we're doing on purpose. And then here's the mix. So this is the original signal, and then turn back up. All right, so originally we are peaking around, we'll say around like 10, minus 10 dB, maybe like minus 11 actually, and then with this, exactly at minus 6 dB. So try and get it back down to where it was before, and uh, this is the output, so it's gonna get it back down to 10. All right, so it was about right there, okay? So let's go and see exactly what that did for us in general. So it should be at the same dB whenever I click this on and off. See, it still sounds good, right? It can be very misleading when you're adding distortion and all you're hearing is that it's raising the volume, but here I think that it really sounds a lot better by turning that on. It has a lot more presence. It cuts through the mix a lot more. And now here's what it sounds like with everything going on. Yeah, it's cutting through the mix a lot more. I like that. I like that a lot. I also just realized that I was talking when I said that I shouldn't be talking for that part. Now I want to see what we can do with the snare. Going to add Diablo again. Okay, so the one thing that I have noticed is that the, the punch right here is not doing all that much to it. It's still doing something to it. So I feel like the whole thing is being carried by this clip knob right here, not necessarily the punch, right? Listen to the punch. Like it's not doing a whole lot. But now if we leave the punch off, and then go back over to clip with it all the way up on soft or hard, doesn't really matter. It's automatically beefing it up so much more. And here I think I want to be soft clipped as opposed to hard, but here's how it sounds with the hard clipper on. Soft. Now we're gonna get an A and B comparison going on. So without the plugin, we were at all the way down there. Okay, yeah, sure, why not? So let's go and try and turn down the output to where it was beforehand. That's gonna be the closest that we're gonna be able to get it here right now. So here it was before the plugin, and now with. Now granted, I am layering the snare with the clap, so that's why it's not gonna be too loud in the mix, but if you really want to beef it up, I think it would be perfectly fine to use this plugin. Like that just sounds fine, that's okay. Like that's, it's gonna help out a lot in your mix. And those are the two main instruments that I'm really looking forward to using this plugin with, the kick and the snare, but now I do want to go and try and do a little stuff to the clap and the, uh, the other snare that we had. So let's see what we can do to this clap. All right, so nothing too crazy going on there, but I think it does have a little bit more like beef to it. So here, punch is just going to be like your transient. It's not necessarily a transient shaper, it's more of a transient booster, if anything. And your clip is going to be the main thing that's gonna be raising up the body of everything. Even though they are gonna have an actual body knob inside of the full version of Diablo, because I already saw that in the Instagram post. But the one thing that I do wanna go over is the 808s. I'm gonna turn off the effects that I already put on there. And here's what the 808 sounds like dry. And now we're just gonna be adding Diablo onto there. I'm not entirely sure if you can use 808s on here, but I think they said that you can. So we're gonna try and see if that does anything to it. So there it sounds like it's basically just putting up the kick a little bit and then it's distorting a little bit. I mean, that sounds good. <laughs> 
Okay, cool. Actually, now the next thing is I'm gonna be putting these all onto a mixer bus over here, putting on Diablo again. So before this, we were, we're sitting at around 9 dB. Okay, so let's hear how everything sounds with the mixer bus. We put a lot of stuff on here, so we, put, we added a lot more punch and then a lot more clipping as well with the hard parameter. And we turned down the output a little bit just so we can match the actual dB that we had beforehand. So with the exact same dB range, that's what we had before we added the Diablo Light plugin. And that is already with Diablo Light on some of the actual individual instruments. But now on the master bus, if I put on Diablo Lights, here it sounds now. And now with everything in mind. I think that sounds pretty good. All right, now for the final test that I want to do today is going to be to turn off Diablo Light and then go grab DS10 Drum Shaper. So here it's on a mixer bus. I'm going to be leaving it on there and then just turning up some of the attack and messing with some of these knobs. There, I know that's sounding a lot better, but we are peaking at least 3 dB above what we were beforehand. All right, so to be completely honest, I think that I do enjoy the DS10 drum shaper a little bit better for mixer buses, but it can be a little bit finicky sometimes. You've really got to make sure to move these knobs very slowly and make minor adjustments, because if not, it'll sound really weird. But these are two different types of plugins here. You know, like here's got a whole like snare parameter in general and a kick one and a bus. But then again, the full Diablo plugin might actually have even more stuff than DS10 drum shaper. So I think that it's time that we started arranging this beat out and finish this thing. Right, so this intro is actually just cap. I don't want to use that at all. I just wanted to use it for the video, but now we can actually just start building out our arrangement like normal. We're just gonna build out like a verse and a hook or something like that. We're gonna find out. Okay, so none of that. We're gonna have like eight bars right here. I do like what I did beforehand, just cut these out and set the hi-hat to ride and then cut that out too. So here's where the hook is gonna be, right? I've actually been seeing a lot of songs doing this recently, including Go by Kid Leroy and Juice World, to where this is the first part of the hook and then it's basically just doubled with some more intense drums and I actually love when that happens. So I'm cool with that. This is actually the hook right here. Super simple arrangements and then pull the hook back on over over here. All right, cool. And then we're gonna be building out then a little bit of an, a little bit of an outro. Yeah, that'll be good like that. And I think this is going to be our arrangement for now, I think. <laughs> cool. Okay, so I think that we are gonna be all good to go here. All right, so I'm really curious to hear what you guys think about the Diablo Light plugin. It is free to download. All you have to do is go over to cymatics.fm and go pick up your copy. And I'm thinking about, depending on the price, of course, picking up the full version of Diablo when that comes out. I'm not quite sure if they've even labeled when it's gonna be coming out, but I'm excited for it. So if you enjoyed this video, be sure to drop a like down below as it helps me out a lot and subscribe for more future content. Thank you guys so very much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. Welcome to the simulation. simulation.